There's music, can't help it. So I'm going to be doing a podcast on what I do to wake up. Um, I, I finally uh, combined my routine. And my routine has finally been pretty well done, actually. And so the routine has been pretty good so far. So here's what I do. I don't care if there's music at this point because I'm not paid enough to care about this. Otherwise, I would have probably waited. So one of the things I'm starting to understand about um, a lot of video recording is that there's a reason why you need a production room, a sound room. And that's because we don't have a software that's been invented yet that can filter out, that can select what type of background noise to actually remove. Right, we only can remove one type of background noise, white noise, right? But what is white noise, right? White noise is divided into several variants. So, so, I design, when we, when we're filtering out white noise, we're talking about, like, like, just, um, just like some clanky audio. We're trying to, we're, we're talking about, uh, what do you call it? No, common certain types of wavelengths. We're trying to filter out certain, certain types of wavelengths that are, like, Anomalies normally, like if you were to go do a voice recording, right, you will hear some, you'll hear some, uh, muffling. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. There's, you hear some muffling on the voice. It's like you might hear some sort of a crackle, right? That's the type of noise it removes. Right? They're, they're removing in the crackle, it can't get filtered out, right? It gets filtered out. But anything else, like, let's say you, you hear music, right? if it's car noise, that's white noise, right? Because that's a crackle, right? But, like, stuff like music, um, stuff like, uh, like what I hear right now, and uh, stuff like birds, right? Birds, like, chirping and stuff, that's not white noise, but you may consider that white noise, right? So part of the problem with a lot of music production videos is that people have to know like what it is they exactly want. Um, music production is a lot, a lot like uh, it's similar to math. Um, I, I think people understand math wrong. Um, that doesn't make it more intimidating. I think it's it's like mathematics in the sense that you have to learn how to calibrate what you say, and I don't even think that's the right way to even frame it about drawing stuff. Math is art. Right? I've always believed that math should be learned like art, right? It shouldn't be learned as a language. And when you're drawing something, you always want to be precise on what it is you're drawing. Otherwise, they're all anonymously the same. No one really wants to define their terms. So that's why if I cared and I got paid, I would get a sound room or I'd wait, right? If I can't get a sound room, I'd go to a quiet location. I drive somewhere if I can't afford a sound room. Yeah. All right, so the sound room is very efficient. Um, I, I do the arts. Now, anyways, so I, I, I don't know how long I keep my job. Um, there does seem to be a drive of work. I, however, don't know where I want to go for school. I got a lot of things you got to think about. You know, schools used to, or any tech skills, tech schools. I, I have an impression there's no jobs. And I, I know, uh, Yeah, and and uh, here's the thing, the, uh, with a lot with a lot of uh, warehouse work, you gotta really learn how to strategize. Like like to me, like I've been doing like lifting, I've been bending, I've been squatting, I've been doing grocery stuff for like God knows how long. So a lot lot of a lot of stuff I'm doing, I'm always willing to learn new stuff and do stuff faster. Right, and I'm, I'm there's always people faster than me.
Um, where do they end up going? I think a lot of them end up going into construction or they go into college, right? You know, a programmer and then they leave. They don't, they go to school to leave. They don't stick around. Um, so what I do is I, I've tested the water length, right? So I drink hot water and then I drink cold water to change my mental state so I get shock. That keeps me awake, right? So I sleep. Make sure I sleep during the break room and stuff. I really make sure I sleep during breaks. Talking is a really dumb idea during break. If you want to talk to your coworkers, you should do it after work. I'm a believer of that. Um, a lot of workers today don't seem to think that way for these low-paying jobs. I don't know. It used to be that way. I don't know what happened to society. I don't understand what happened to society. Like, I can't... I, we're not living in a society where, apparently, at least in my workplace, where it's okay, where it's okay to, like, to meet up with people after work, right? You want to get your all your misunderstandings clear? Go talk to you afterwards. Now maybe they still lie. Maybe they tell the truth. You talk to people after work. You do not talk to people during work. Too many problems. Too many misunderstandings. Too much tension. No, no. If you're if you're not gonna talk after work, um, you're you're not worth talking to. work you, you meet up for lunch you meet up for coffee whatever it is right you don't buy food right I, i've seen some people broke they chat this is why if you're stuck at work and you're struggling you, you get the phone number of the manager so the manager helps you out um, this happens all the time i mean if you can't do that forget about it, right right you want to ask questions about the office um you cannot talk about it in the office because there's too much tension in the office and the problem is it's not open anymore. And, and those who don't know um, have to learn the hard way. And, and unfortunately, if you're with a family that's out of touch, um, that doesn't has never experienced the office before, right? their parents pamper them because they are the office, you're kind of screwed. So this is just kind of one of those things about workplace. I never really chat with people who don't understand that. It's not worth moving up in companies like that because that company... It's too unsafe. You you want to keep you want to be able to go up in life without threatening your current position. Yeah. So uh, this is kind of one of those things you have to know about. So yes, you have to switch. You have to experiment around. I drink tea when I drive back at work. And so, and that is how you work fast. Um, now, is it a good thing? You wake up, it's tough, you, you feel you feel like you want to fall asleep and stuff. Not really. Um, not much you can do. I, I personally believe in cycle iteration. So, I, I always believe that there are ways to sleep with minimal sleep, do warehouse work, but you have to know when to, when to eat stuff, right? You got to operate on a timer. You gotta know when to eat stuff. You gotta know when to eat hot stuff. You gotta know when to bite your lip, right? So you can stay awake. There's a lot of tricks you can do. Um, I'd much rather, and of course, you have to be willing to learn learn new tricks from other people, right? Whatever helps you. You gotta have a some sort of scheduling system set up. There has to be a scheduling system that you can set up to help you learn, and. The reason why I do a lot of, uh, so, there is, uh, so a little background, so why I do this, I was in a learning, I used to, I was autistic back, I was diagnosed as autistic in high school, and I saw a lot of people do music to express themselves, and, or, I mean, music videos. Yeah, and you do it, for, I don't know if they did it for free or not, but it was a good idea. It's a good idea to do podcasts, it's a good idea to do music, it gets you customers, it gets you people, it gets you connections, because the only thing that's valuable in life are high quality connections not even really money right really good friends and if you don't have good friends money doesn't really mean much and when worse comes to worse if you can't get good friends it's now money helps it's just not the best substitute yes good friends help you make wiser decisions Right? You're, it was like you, 
you're surrounded by a company of good men, you know, you do good things. It's the same concept. Only if you're corrupt, you do less. You do corrupt stuff that doesn't get you damned, right? It is kind of the rule of life. Um, unfortunately, we live in a society that, that doesn't care. People have never cared. And that's also why, uh, like I said, politics trends downstream. So if people don't care, people don't actually say what they mean in politics. That's where you get all these hypocrisy debates from. This is kind of one of those really bad situations. Um, so yeah, you got, and, and for waking up early, I, I make sure I hold my breath and I don't breathe until I actually move fast. Not everyone's willing to do that. I, and then and as long as I move fast, I can breathe again. There's a lot of things I do. There's a lot of tricks you can do to keep awake. Um, but it works. Now, now some people might not do it. Some might. Um, it's what it is. There's no prize in keeping these things secret. I'm just here to either get my cheat my job or go through different jobs. I can't move to a higher paying job anymore because I need, because rate doesn't matter as much as people think. What matters is adaptability. Rate matters, of course. And the willingness to help other people out. At least in terms of job asset. As for relationship, it, it's part, you gotta be part, part, uh, you gotta stab them, right? If they stab you back in part, I'm helpful. You have to know when to uh, walk that tightrope. You have to know when to walk that because people will take advantage of each other all the time. Because no, we live in a society where no one's plain about anything. There's nothing wrong with that when you work, right? But there is something wrong with that in your personal life. If you don't want to have a spat at work, you need to have, if you don't like that person, if you really want to be friends, you're going to have to risk those conversations that might evolve into a spat. You, you can't, can't work other ways. Um, I personally, now if it's a relationship where you're still employed by someone, right, friends with them, obviously you got to keep professional. Whatever they believe is whatever they believe, whatever you believe is whatever you believe, right? You don't have a choice in that matter. Now, I'll, I'll give you some hints. I'll give you some hints on how you know you're right. Whatever it is you believe, it might not be agreed by the other guy. Uh, when they express the opposite, when they're gesturing indirectly, right? That's why there's indirect communication. Right? My people might have an ego, but they'll do small things to admit they're wrong, right? They might show a lot of indirect gestures. That's why you have photographic evidence. And if they express something that implies the opposite of what they said, that's fine. You know, not everyone's going to admit it. You don't have a choice. People aren't going to be plain about anything. Um, if they're rational, that's what you do. Now, I personally am okay with admitting I'm wrong. Now, sometimes, I am indirect this. I might say I'm right, even though I'm wrong, but I'm not sure because I have to wait until events pan out, right? So what I do is I indirectly communicate, or I honestly say I'm not sure yet. Even when I've decided on a topic that's opposed uh, to take a stance that's opposing mine, but I still want to stay in my lane because I, I, it's a very high stakes situation, like a hostage situation, or or like a volatile works where you're trying to pick favorites. Um, you you need to be you need to hold firm, right? You need to be indirect sometimes. It's necessary. It's completely necessary because you may need to switch back because if they because you can't always express honestly because sometimes. When you're trying to promote someone, it's a high stakes, high tension, depending on the industry. Now, in clerical, you can be completely honest. But, but in like construction, right, where people will throw stuff at you, you might want to be indirect, right, within those microtransactions. Because people might lose their psyche, right? They might lose their sanity if they don't get promoted, right? Or if you misinterpret stuff. This is kind of why you have indirect community. And then when everything is close, is clear. Everything gets fixed.
Yeah, we, uh, we don't, uh, this is one of those sad situations. Um, I, uh, so I went over, I am not, look, if you're wondering, I made two Amazon commercials. The first one and the second one, I'll probably do more soon. I'm planning on doing an Amazon, uh, Domino's commercial or something. Just have like, people working Amazon, working Domino's, just have to do a side. It might be an interesting commercial too, because a lot of companies like to think they're competitive, but the competitive atmosphere exists to some extent. It, it doesn't exist all the time. It's, 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 you can't be competitive without being cooperative first. You ever, ever played chess or Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the championship? You, you cannot beat the champion and be territorial without cooperating with someone higher level. You, ever, you are always taught. It's either direct or indirect, right? You, so if you get in the ring, you, you commercialize stuff. You, you always want to have a symbiotic relationship before you have a predatory one. Because predatory might be more beneficial. That's the safe way to start anything. Now, the uh, symbiotic one could be you work for free for a while, but but either way you're learning, right? This is not like a lot of society, a lot of stuff, how you learn stuff. I, I believe you're working for free. I could be wrong, right? That's why forgiveness was a big thing in the Bible. People work for free for a while. Right? That's what schooling kind of was initially. How did you get paid? I, I always said it was the Holy Spirit that paid you. And to translate that, you were given a plot of land by something, or some god, um, where you were given food. You lived there for a while. As long as you studied it, you were fine. Some people couldn't even get asparagus back then. That, that was kind of the past. Now, it is, I'm pretty sure it's the Holy Spirit. I, I like to be an atheist, because I know, I think God. People all leave. Um, now, why he he left for his own reasons? People will say, "Well, there's no proof of him." But it, you can call it whatever you want. Now, it might not be God. Let's let's not call it God. Let's call it a creature. Some creature ate you. So you wanted to learn how to hunt down an animal. This is why I think God exists, and I'll, I'll explain it in a much more plainer way, in a rational manner. God is a creature. And the creature needed help hunting down other creatures. Right? It gave birth to other creatures. Now, you're, remember the animal sacrificing? Now, now, your goal, right? God, there was an argument that God was originally a lamb. He was a lamb. So he, in the lamb, gave birth, or Ace actually reproduced a lot of lambs, right? And so you wanted to hunt the lamb down, but you had no tools. So who do you ask for help? Now, the lamb wanted stuff from him. The lamb wanted, wanted to recognize his own consciousness. So, and, and what the lamb got in return was that once it got more conscious, it can actually create magic and stuff out of thin air. Now, what else do you call that? Well, people call that animal a deity. That is how this, this game all starts. And there was an option for atheism. Um, the option for atheism was you created a feedback loop independent from magic, right? Open, closed system. And then you're off magic. So atheism is now a thing. People never wanted to talk about this plainly. This is this type of stuff you don't talk to people plainly about. But it's real. Um, I know it makes too much sense. I don't know what else humans offer. Right, your consciousness, God wants to understand the consciousness, and the symbiotic relationship was with, between the animal and the human, right? The animal shared a similar consciousness to the human being. And the consciousness of the human being was an evolution from the lamb, right? It was called God. Or the black sheep. Now, people might say, well, yeah, and like I said, remember, the universe started out with a thought, right? Remember, a god, god that was a lamb, and, he, and the thought came in the form of a lamb. 
He clued you in on how the universe was made. I clued you in earlier. It's, it's a thought, right? Oh, uh, so. The thought helped give birth, give birth to everything. He was, he was a lot of things. He right, wanted to hunt snakes down, God was the snake, right? But in Apple, God was the apple. He was a lot of things. He gave a lot of hints, right? He made he he was um he was a GM administrator. He's an avatar, an avatar called consciousness. I saw all the electromagnetic field theory on how animals weren't really animals; they're just electromagnetic waves, energy you just consume by hunting them down. So a lot of the things about God, um, so God was a lot of things. So anyways, after he hunts, he teaches you to hunt stuff down. In return, you give him consciousness, right? You communicate with him. He starts self-learning, right? He's like AI. Now he can start creating stuff on his own. Create resources, yeah. And so he gains magic powers by understanding more about how your consciousness operates, right? That was the exchange. Now, why why would God do this? Because God is part of a bigger whole, of a, a bigger uh, um, unicellular organism. And multicellularity, right within the uh, within the unicellular organism, the, the the unicellular organism is basically an atom that has multicellular organism, which is like the body parts of the universe, right? That so originally there was only one universe, right? And then it split itself. Um, I'm categorizing it based on our language into 42 universes, right? I obviously asexually reproduced a bunch of times. Right? Once I understood how one thought formed, it asexually reproduced, right? They split to see like what happens when you start out with like I'm angry, right? Now you want to see what 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 you can th what thoughts come out when you think with anger, right? Now it could do it with one one organism, but it would not process stuff as fast. We our, our brain already has evidence of how life came. If we search with the right tech, we can go through our dreams much faster. And we'll be able to find out what happened. Because all of the living beings have a, a mental backup. Some sort of CPU RAM disk, right? So yeah, this is a pretty long topic. So yeah, um, so the animals, you keep eating them, you, you you evolve, right? As you as you learn better tech, the god learns the tech, and eventually the consciousness and, and how and of course there's an equivalent exchange, right? When when the when the when the caveman learns how to use spears properly, maybe God learns how to summon lightning, right? It's like shared EXP from Pokemon. That's the best way to talk about. Now, the difference is God can only do shared EXP to level up. He can't uh, use anything else. Now, God can do it the normal way, but his goal is to help his species evolve. Right? To create more of itself to understand his consciousness. Like, consciousness operates on shared EXP. So when you ask, uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg? The thought came first. It's an irrelevant question. It wasn't the egg, it wasn't the chicken, it was the thought. That counts, right? That thought that counts comes from somewhere. It comes from the fact that the chicken or egg question is BS. You should ask where, where, what, which came first, the thought, chicken, or the egg? And the question is, the moment you formulate that question, the chicken, the ch both came first, right? Right. The thought came in its formulated. And, and the thing about the thought the thought 
completely uh, is uh, the thought is a beautiful thing. Um, now, 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 obviously, even, now there's a global cooling, and that's what happens when you stop thinking, right? So if you ever try to forget a thought, it carries weight. Remember, each thought carries weight. You, you experience a global cooling where the heat that's generated from the thought starts fading, right? When you try to forget a thought, the, the, the images associated with that thought, they dry up slowly, like they, they evaporate slowly, little by little. You, you lose the imagery that makes the thought, like piece, pixel by pixel, right? It does not like, oh, boom, you forgot about it. Some people can. Or, or you go so fast, it makes you look like you're switching gears. But at, in reality, it's slow, depending on your processing speed. That's why it's called global cooling. Now, the reason why global cooling exists is because we live in an entropy universe. It takes too long. Because every, or everything orderly falls into chaos. It takes too long for a thought. For, so we're still at our first thought, right? The first thought that created the universe, it's still waiting to forget itself, right? The universe is a membrane to forget its thought. It's still taking too long. Now, once global cooling ends, we can finally go down to another thought. Now, the other universes that are higher than 42, which we're at, um, they don't have to do that as much. The global cooling stage would have ended by now or something, right? Because there's more order, right? The more order you have in building your laptop with the more components that work, the faster you can process stuff. We're at 5 billion years. We're, we're at the speed of slow. And the joke is, the global cooling never ends. That's for entropy. There's nothing. It's just an illusion of cooling. You can't forget a thought, right? And it's part of, and, and spiritually speaking, it's, part, it's a product of our... Uh, Smartphone society, right? We can't let go of a thought. We can't let go of a slight, right? We can't let go of our anger. We can't forget about stuff. Anyways, I'll end this podcast here. It's there's a lot of other things to talk about.